Hello and welcome to Glasgow Rangers Nation with me, your host, Erin, the channel that brings you your team every single day, the channel that brings you all the latest news, updates, rumours, statements, comments, views to do with the greatest club in the world, bar none, Rangers FC. Well, we've got a few updates to bring you today, a bit of afternoon update coming on. Um, if you have just found the channel and you are a Rangers fan and you want your daily update, then smash that sub, guys. This is a channel that brings you daily news, obviously it brings you live streams. Uh, now the season's starting, we'll be having live streams. We've got a number of live streams booked in already. We've got Saturday, the Kilmarnock game. We've also got the two European games coming up as well. An awful lot of live streams. We've got podcasts, um, currently working on guests as well for those podcasts. So hit that sub, ring that notification bell so you never miss out on the content. Do you know what? It's all free, guys. It's free. We're not charging you a single penny for it. So, you know, get it for free. Um, keep checking out Twitter. I always, I'm, you know what? I'm, I'm addicted to Twitter at the moment. Uh, I'm trying to see, obviously, when the Fuentes Neil, uh, Neil? No, Fuentes News even is made official. Still no scarf or stripped photo as of yet. But we will keep checking here um, and obviously get back to you as soon as it happens. But news around other players possibly exiting the club. Um, Fashion Sakala news. Also a bit of a debate over the captaincy of the team as well. Um, now, and also the final dates have been confirmed for the game between the games between Rangers and Servette in the European Champions League third round qualifier. Um, this was on the club website this morning. Uh, third qualifying round is confirmed now as the 9th and 15th of August. The home leg will be on the 9th at Ibrox and the away leg will be on the 15th at the Stade de Genève in Geneva, Switzerland. Um, as Rangers seek to advance to the qualifier round to get into the group stages. But we've got to focus on this. Servette, even though they, you know, were probably the team that we wanted to get through, are not going to be a pushover. They will be a, a team that we'll have to really fight hard against to advance and to beat. So a really big, massive, crucial game coming up for Rangers. Two crucial games coming up on the 9th and the 15th. Both of those games obviously will be here on Glasgow Rangers Nation on a live stream. Uh, come and join us for those uh, times to be confirmed. Well, let's talk a little bit about Fashion Sakala. Now, Fashion Sakala, initially, uh, according to the media, had said that he would not be moving to Saudi Arabia. Some people even citing uh, religious reasons for that. Obviously, uh, Fashion is a committed Christian. And, you know, fair play to the guy if that's his view. Uh, we're all entitled to our own views, our own, uh, you know, our own beliefs. And if that's what he's entitled to, that, you know, if that's what he thinks, then fair enough. But it does look like um, that move now is now back on. Um, now, rumours yesterday, well, reports yesterday, let's put it that way, were saying that uh, it's Fashion Sakala would be leaving for £3 million. Now, that represents a decent profit, you know, considering that uh, we paid nothing for him from Ostend in Belgium. However, the fourth official, who is, which is a very well-known well, well known, uh, site, obviously does get, has good sources, does come out with a lot of good stuff, um, stated this this morning um, in a tweet um, it was actually yesterday, I think it was yeah, yesterday. Uh, I know that reports are talking about three million for Fashion Sakala from Saudi, but I confirm Rangers will get four million for him, just as I first reported. So it looks like four million pounds will be the incoming fee for Fashion Sakala. Now, I know what a lot of fans are thinking and saying. A lot of fans are saying, well, could we not get rid of Matondo first? Could we not really get rid of Scott Wright first? Could we not get rid of Kamar Roof because he's always injured? Could we not get rid of Glenn Kamara first? The problem is we can only get rid of we can only sell, let's put it this way, let's put it better, that sounds nicer, doesn't it? We can only sell players who other clubs want to buy. Now, we can want to sell Scott Wright, we can want to sell Glenn Kamara, we can want to sell Ravi Matondo, we can want to sell a number of players. But if there are no takers for those players, if no one wants those players, then you're going to struggle to get any money for them unless you give them away for absolutely nothing. And I am tempted with the Sakala deal to throw them Borna Barisic and John Lundstrom in as a, as a you know buy one, get two free kind of thing. Uh, personally would drive Borna and John all the way to Saudi myself. I wouldn't even charge the Saudis for petrol. But um, Fashion Sakala, you know, four million represents good business. You know, if it is that, you know, like it has been reported that he will find his first team minutes severely limited at this season, then, you know, he wants to go and play first team football. He doesn't want to be sitting on the bench. That seems to be very much the reports that are coming out of Glasgow. So therefore, look at it this way. You know, if Fashion's going to go to Saudi, he's going to get a big payday. He's going to get uh, first team football. Then fair play to the guy. Look, I know he's not a player that divides the fan base massively. There's fans that just can't stand him and just think he's absolute 
awful. It's awful. There's other fans who love fashion and, and rave about him. You know, Curry, for instance, my good mate Curry Muncher loves fashion to Carla. Personally, I think he's a squad player at very best. And the issue with fashion has always been that when he has time, when he has, you know, time to think, he struggles. He lacks composure at times. And I think a lot of fans really have not forgiven him for those two, missing those two absolute sitters in the uh, semi-final and the final uh, against Celtic. Um, you know, Look, I know other strikers missed it. People said, oh, well, Ali McCoy missed it. Yeah, he did. But I don't think there was costly or as often as the mistakes that fashion makes. Um, you know, fashion is an enigma, isn't he? He's an absolute enigma. That's the best word for him. He's an enigma. And you know, if it is that he's going to Saudi, four million represents a fantastic profit. It's money that can be reinvested into the club. It's money that can be put back into purchasing, hopefully, some defenders, which I think is very much the need at this moment in time. We do need to sign some defensive reinforcements. As I've said on numerous occasions, you know, the defence lacks real quality in depth, not strength in depth, quality in depth. So, you know, there are a number of centre-halves, Ben Davis, John Suter, Connor Goldson, John Lee Yefeko, Leon King, you know, the, John Lundstrom can play there. There's six, seven players who can play at centre-half. John Sterling can play there as well. Not, he's not a fan of doing that. He prefers to be a right-back or a left-back. Uh, but, you know, there is a lot of players there. But just because you've got a lot of players doesn't mean you've got a lot of quality. And that's something that I think, you know, once you get past Connor Goldson and John Suter, who I personally rate, I know a lot of fans don't rate Connor Goldson, but I do, um, you know, there is a lack of quality. Now, Rangers have had three primary targets, so it seems, over the summer at the centre-half position. Charlie Cresswell, Austin Trusty, and Jonathan Panzo. As I've reported to you on previous videos, the Trusty move and the Cresswell move are now dead, with Trusty on the verge of a £5 million move to Sheffield United and Cresswell signing a new long-term deal at Leeds United. News this morning that the that any deal for Jonathan Panzo is also now dead as well. Uh, the English media are reporting that Panzo is on his way to West Bromwich Albion from Nottingham Forest. Um, he has been linked with clubs in the Bundesliga and also in France, but it appears that West Bromwich Albion, who also the other day signed Josh Madger, will secure the services of Jonathan Panzo. So that's all three centre-half targets gone. So where do Rangers turn? What is the what is the plan there? I think, you know, with the, with the Sakala money, uh, with any money we obviously generate from the sale of Glenn Kamara, it could be as much as five and a half million with the perhaps a half a million there as well from Scott Wright. That's 10 million pounds coming into the club. You know, I think Rangers should splash on a decent centre half. We have, I think, for a long time been lacking a leader at the back. Of, and I know Goldson is good at good at communicating and, and is a good leader, but I'm talking about an outstanding, rugged, in-your-face get out there, be nasty when he needs to be, sent real traditional Rangers centre-half. Now, look, I haven't done a great deal of scouting on this. I know Jake Cooper from Millwall has been mentioned. Dan Ballard of Sunderland is another good, very good player as well. You know, there's there's a number of players out there that perhaps we could attract, but I really do think that something needs to be done at that centre-half position and a real dominant, dominant centre-half. Um, you know, left-back, I think, is obviously a bit of an issue. Ridvan, I think, needs to be given time. Uh, Yefeko can possibly play there as well. Dujon Sterling can play there. Um, so there is a number of players. Now, people have mentioned Adam Devine, but reports this morning indicate that Devine and Lowry could well be sent out on loan this season. A uh, number of English League One and League Two clubs apparently in the running for Alex Lowry, Oxford United and Northampton Town, uh, which I don't think would be the greatest move for Alex in the world. I'd like to see him go to a team that perhaps controls the ball a little bit better, perhaps slightly higher up the English football pyramid if it is that he is going to go south of the border. Uh, Adam Devine as well, you know, somewhere where he's going to get opportunity to play. And again, at a quite high level to really develop and hone his skills. I don't think League One and League Two in England are the best places. Having watched a bit of League One football a couple of seasons back, they are. It is an absolutely shocking standard at times. Um, some of the teams down there are absolutely appalling. They are cloggers, pub teams. Um, so, yeah, I'd only hope that, you know, that the situation will be if the two players are going to move, it will be to a higher end team. But, uh, you know, certainly some interesting news there. Now, there's been a bit of a debate in the media this morning over who should be the captain of Rangers. I think it was Bob Malcolm, former Rangers player, who suggested that uh, Connor Goldson should take over as Rangers captain, as he is a better communicator and leader than Tav. You know, Tav has been captain for an awful long time now. Um, you know, he's been captain since the days of Lee Wallace, I think was the last non-Tav captain, if my memory serves me right. It might not be. I, I, I'm getting very old these days. Do forget things. Uh, please feel free to correct me if I'm wrong. I'm sure you will. Uh, but Tav 
you know, has struggled this preseason. His defensive skills are starting to lack a little. You know, perhaps taking the prem the cap pressure of captaincy off him may actually help. You know, I think Malcolm has said, and a number of people have said, that maybe Goldson would be the better captain. He is Rangers' vice captain. He is more of a communicator, a shouter, a leader. And sort of linking with Jack Butland this year, him and Jack Butland are expected to be the two that organise and lead that defence. So could it be that Connor Goldson is the man to take over as captain? An interesting thought indeed. Um, guys, you know, it's... Uh, we're currently running a poll on this on the channel. So I'd love to get your thoughts through the votes on the on the poll. If you want to know how to vote in the poll, uh, the best way to do is obviously go to our homepage on YouTube. I will try and show you in a minute how to do where you can find the vote. So to take part in the vote as to who you think will be the best captain of would be the best captain of Rangers, you go to the Glasgow rangers nation homepage on youtube when you're there what you need to do is i'm gonna try and bring it up for you now is you there so i can quickly do it for you here we go so you go to the homepage, you click on the community tab it might come up in your feed actually you know if it, if it doesn't you click on the community tab you scroll down you find the pop it said who which says who should be rangers fc captain so far we've had 40 votes on this um, poll at the moment 53% saying Tav, 35% saying Goldson, 13% saying someone else. And I put on there someone else name in the comments. So if you are going to vote for another name, what I'd love you to do is to stick a name in the comments. Uh, that would be fantastic. I'd love to get your thoughts on who you think would make a better Rangers captain. Um, you know, there is obviously a number of players that have been rumored, uh, a number of players that. Uh, could possibly be the captain. Ryan Jack was one name I saw mentioned. Obviously, his fitness is a concern. Nicholas Raskin was another one. Todd Cantwell I've seen linked with with a possible captaincy of of Rangers. But there are a few comments in that uh, on that poll already. So, like I said, if you are, um, you know, if you do want to vote, please do vote. Um, we've got one person who says uh, John Souter. Some people says leave it with Tav, but when he gets injured, play or or, play, or Sterling plays, but give it to Goldson. Um, someone else saying Goldson or Suter. Someone else saying Jack or Raskin um, as well. You know, there's there's a number of people. Ryan Jack, like I said, so you suggest as well. So if you've got a, a view on that, go and give that a vote. It'd be great to have your views on that. Well, obviously, we're going to try and keep on top of hopefully a signing coming in soon, which is Jose Cifuentes, and hopefully we'll see a defensive arrival as well. Guys, if you've enjoyed the content, please smash that sub, ring that notification bell, and if you can give the video a like, like I said, that's one thing I always need you to do for me is give the video a like. It does help with that complicated YouTube algorithm. And also for me, remember always, please remember always, we are the best. <laughs>